So welcome to this uh, segment on uh, magnetic concepts. Uh, we need uh, to have inductors and transformers in all our converters. So in order to design those, uh, we need to understand uh, magnetic concepts, not only to design those, but to, to analyze these uh, converter circuits. We need to understand these magnetic concepts. So let's get started here. Uh, here we'll see how we need ampere turns uh, to produce uh, flux. And so we ha here we have a geometry here where there are n number of turns on this coil, on this uh, magnetic core, uh, which has an air gap. And for now, let's uh, neglect this fringing of flux uh, passing through the air gap. So let's assume the cross-sectional area of flux uh, uh, through the core to be the same as that through the through air, and uh, therefore, whether it's in the core or it's in air, the flux is the same. And uh, now uh, we can apply uh, Ampere's uh, current law, and which says that uh, assuming the magnetic field intensity to be uniform all through the cross section uh, of the score and the air gap, that uh, the magnetic field intensity in uh, the core times the length of the path, a uh, flux path in the core. Uh, so that's the, the product of these two, uh, plus uh, what's in the air times the length of this air gap. Uh, these two combined would equal to the ampere turns that we are applying on this core. That's n times i. So now, uh, you know, h is uh, uh, the flux density divided by the permeability and uh, this uh, flux density is equal to the flux divided by the core area, uh, the cross-sectional area through which, not just core, but cross-sectional area uh, divided by the permeability here. So if we substitute for H in terms of uh, the flux divided by the cross-sectional area and the permeability uh, for core as well as for the air gap, uh, we get uh, this equation here, and we can recognize that this term here is called the reluctance uh, offered to the flux path in the core, which we designate by this uh, subscript M, and uh, this is the reluctance offered to the flux uh, in in the in air, and we designate by uh, the subscript G. So we have two reluctances which add up to give us the total reluctance. And uh, so flux is the ampere turns we apply divided by the reluctance offered by the structure to, to flux. So uh, next we'll look at uh, <coughs> this uh, inductor here. Uh, again, on a uh, magnetic core, we have n number of turns uh, through which we are passing this current I and the cross-sectional area through which uh, this flux passes, let's call it A sub M, and the permeability of this core is uh, mu sub M, and number of turns, and let's assume that all the flux lines are confined to this uh, magnetic core, then the, the, the flux linkage, lambda, is equal to the number of turns times the, the, what the flux is linking uh, each turn, and that is also equal to the inductance of this uh, uh, core or this uh, inductor uh, times the current here that we are passing here. So, so what is the relationship between uh, the flux linkage lambda and current? That would define the inductance, and uh, that we can see in the in this uh, expression here below. So we we have this current I, and from Ampere's law. Uh, you know, ampere turns Ni divided by the uh, mean path length of the score would give us the magnetic field intensity. We multiply that by the permeability. That gives the flux density. We multiply the flux density by the uh, cross-sectional area through which, the, through which flux is passing. That gives us the flux multiplied by number of turns. That gives us the flux linkage. So you can see that... Uh, uh, you know, dividing this lambda m with, by this current uh, 
And that is just the product of all these terms here. And uh, combining those, we see here that this inductance, as uh, we saw earlier, which is lambda over i, is equal to, it turns out to be n squared divided by the, this reluctance over here. Okay. So <coughs> the important thing here to note is that uh, the, the inductance of the structure would be proportional to square of the number of turns. Uh, we can also look at uh, the energy storage. Uh, for example, in, in, the, in an inductor, we know it's uh, half uh, Li squared, and uh, we, can cal uh, we can define L in terms of these magnetic quantities, and similarly I from uh, Ampere's law, and the bottom line is that this energy stored W here <coughs> is equal to this expression here, where this part here is the volume. Uh, the cross-sectional area times the, the length. So that's the volume. And so if you divide the energy stored by this volume, the energy density is equal to one-half flux density squared divided by the permeability. Uh, the next thing, which is a very important concept as well, is uh, of induced EMF due to Faraday's law uh, if uh, the time rate of change of flux linkage uh, uh, is changing. So uh, let's take this uh, uh, coil over here and arbitrarily define the polarity of this induced EMF E over here. So arbitrarily I said let's say this is positive here. So now, uh, you know, to apply this uh, Faraday's law which says that induced EMF is equal to d lambda dt, uh, we first need to define the direction uh, of uh, flux. So to define the direction of flux, what we will do is we will use uh, passive sign convention. That is, let's say that uh, there is a current going into the positive terminal in the direction shown here. So if the current is in this direction, uh, you can appreciate that uh, this is uh, going in here and it's coming out over here. So due to this, the flux direction in the core would be positive like this here. So uh, once we have uh, found the direction of this flux, uh, then we can forget about this current over here because we really don't need to have a current to uh, have a voltage induced because this flux may be produced by uh, some other means. For example, there may be another coil in this uh, structure that is causing this flux linkage with this coil and that flux linkage may be changing with the, with time, okay. So, <clears throat> so given this uh, voltage polarity that we first assumed arbitrarily and uh, based on this uh, flux direction, we can say that uh, from Faraday's law, the induced EMF is equal to d lambda dt and if you assume that uh, the same flux is linking all n turns, then it's, it's equal to n times uh, d uh, phi dt. And this can also be written in an integral form as shown here. Okay, so now we will look at uh, uh, leakage and magnetizing inductances. Uh, when we have magnetic structures, uh, we bound to have uh, leakage flux. Uh, for example, here in the structure, our objective may be to pass the flux through the air gap as shown here. But, uh, Inevitably, there will be uh, leakage flux through the, through the window of the structure here. So what we have, uh, uh, you know, in the structure, uh, we can uh, simplify it by saying that uh, we have a magnetic flux, P sub M, which links all turns and is completely confined to the core. Then we have a leakage flux, P sub L, uh, which is in the air gap, but it also links all N turns. So that's uh, sort of a combined description. So from here we can see that as far as this coil is concerned, the flux linkage is uh, this n times phi, where this uh, flux is really the product of uh, a combination of this uh, magnetizing flux and the leakage flux. So it's uh, n times phi sub m, which we'll call the, this uh, lambda sub m, 
and n times the leakage flux, which we'll call uh, lambda sub L. So it's the sum of um, these two over here. So now if you divide this equation on both sides by the current I, then we see here that this quantity we'll call the self-inductance, and uh, which is equal to the magnetizing inductance of this uh, uh, coil plus the leakage inductance of this coil here. So that's what is written over here. So you can see that uh, the flux linkage of this coil is, uh, uh, you know, I times the self-inductance, which is the sum of the magnetizing inductance and the leakage inductance. So if you apply Faraday's uh, law to this, uh, then we can say that the induced EMFE uh, would be equal to, uh, from this equation, if you take the time derivative, it will be L m times di dt and uh, the leakage uh, inductance uh, times di dt over here. So we will uh, further look at this equation in the next slide. So starting with this equation, uh, what we can do is we can uh, express the drop across the leakage inductance explicitly. And uh, so uh, if we draw an equivalent circuit to represent this equation over here, uh, we, we are explicitly showing this uh, drop across the leakage inductance, and then we have this uh, voltage Em, uh, which is uh, Lm times uh, Di dt. So the, we can also include the resistance of this coil, as shown here in this picture. This uh, The leakage inductance is shown explicitly. So what we have done is we have taken that original structure in which we had the magnetizing flux as well as the leakage flux, we took out the leakage flux uh, and represented it by this uh, drop, voltage drop, uh, uh, represented by this L sub leakage here through which we have a voltage drop. And then we have a magnetic structure where there is no leakage because that has been taken out explicitly on only the magnetizing flux over here. <coughs> so it's a very useful uh, technique because we can uh, derive an equivalent circuit for a transformer just using the, the magnetizing flux, and then we can add the drop due to the leakage inductance uh, rather simply. So uh, this brings us to the description of a transformer, and let's say that we have three windings on this uh, common core as shown here, and, uh, uh, you know, very carefully the the coil orientations are shown, and uh, these uh, dotted uh, terminals are also identified. We just need to uh, pick one dot arbitrarily. Let's say we pick uh, this dot and one coil over here, then it becomes, uh, then there's no choice. If the orientation is carefully shown uh, on the orientation in which these coils are placed, then uh, the dots would be as shown over here. So. You know, from Faraday's law, we can say that, uh, you know, you have E1, which is uh, N1 dP dt. Again, we are ignoring any leakage flux here for the time being. Similarly, E2 would be N2 dP dt. E3 is N3 dP dt. And uh, so these three equations combined tell us that, uh, uh, you know, dP dt is equal to uh, volts per turn. So in each coil, volts per turn would be the same. E1 over N1 is equal to E2 over N2, uh, things like that. And uh, we can write this equation in this integral form as well over here. So here, uh, the other thing we, we can say is that uh, uh, if you make use of uh, Ampere's law, uh, the, the combined Ampere turns acting on this core uh, if you define I1 to be going into the dot, similarly I2 and I3, the total ampere turns acting on this core would be the sum of uh, all these three ampere turns. And divide by the, the reluctance of this core would give us the flux. So it will turn out that in a realistic circuit uh, or in a, tr a transformer used in a circuit, uh, you know, maybe the ampere turns are only coming from one side to produce this flux, but in general, uh, 
uh, it's really the sum of all three acting on the score divided by the, the magnetic reluctance that is giving us this uh, flux over here. So, so we can derive an equivalent circuit here for this. Uh, first, uh, we can say that, uh, like, uh, let's say that uh, in this three winding structure, only uh, coil one is supplying the, the the magnetizing current. So from there, we can say that uh, number of uh, turns n one times the magnetizing current I m uh, that is uh, causing the the structure to have the flux is equal to this. So the explicit assumption is that uh, there is uh, nothing coming from uh, coil two and three to create uh, this flux over here. Now, uh, uh, again, applying the sum of ampere turns acting on this core uh, to be equal to this uh, reluctance times the flux, which in this case is just uh, uh, coming from side one, uh, we have this equation here. And you can see here that if uh, we bring it to the left-hand side, this term over here, uh, we can see that N1 times this I1 prime, which is the difference of I1 minus IM1, uh, plus uh, N2 I2 plus N3 I3 is zero. So that is what is shown uh, here. This is an ideal transformer here, okay? And you can see here that uh, uh, this equation is satisfied by uh, this ideal transformer where explicitly we have shown the direction of I2 and I3 going into that, into the dotted uh, terminals, and similarly I1 prime going into the dotted terminal. And uh, you can also see that I1 is the sum of uh, this um, I, I1 prime uh, as well as this magnetizing component IM1 here. So, you know, that is all satisfied. Uh, the next thing is that uh, we have to find out how is this IM1 flowing. So here we know that uh, from Faraday's law, uh, E1 is N1 d phi dt, and uh, phi itself, if uh, only uh, side one is supplying the magnetizing current, so these are the ampere turns acting on the core because uh, nothing from side two and three, let's say they're open, uh, divided by the magnetizing this uh, reluctance here, okay? So now if we substitute this uh, phi sub m over here, uh, we can see that uh, E1 is equal to uh, this N1 squared divided by the reluctance times uh, DIM, DIM1 dt. And uh, this quantity in the brackets is equal to the magnetizing inductance looking from side one. So we can place that magnetizing inductance over here, and that's, this completes the, the equivalent circuit based on what we have discussed. But if you wanted to add the leakage uh, inductances and uh, resistances of these coils, we can always place them in series over here, in series with these coils. So this brings us to the end of this uh, segment where we have looked at uh, magnetic concepts.